Hi guys, um, my name is Sanjay Gupta. I am a cardiologist uh, and I work in York. Um, over the past few months I've put out quite a few videos on the subject of palpitations and I've had some great feedback and I thought I'd do another video because a lot of people ask me about the use of beta blockers in palpitations. Now as I always say that um, this video is really for those people in whom the palpitations have been defined and nothing serious has been found. So this video is exactly for those people who would, for example, um, have palpitations or sensations of missed beats or skip beats. Uh, they've gone to their GP uh, or they've been seen by a cardiologist and they've been told that these are just extra beats or they're missed beats and they're not so, nothing serious. Uh, unfortunately, despite that reassurance, the poor patient continues to get their symptoms. And um, a lot of times they ask, well, what can I do about them? And um, as you, if you've seen my previous videos, um, I have done videos on what you can do about them in terms of your lifestyle. So uh, in terms of modifying what you eat, what you drink, about your exercise, your sleep patterns, etc. Despite this, some people continue to get palpitations and then they want to know, is there anything I can take for them to give me some relief? And often the name beta blockers comes up because beta blockers are commonly used in cardiological practice and they're commonly used for the subject of palp for, for treating palpitations. Now, one of the problems that a lot of people have with beta blockers is that they're unsure of what the side effects are and they don't know whether they need to be on the beta blockers for life or not. Um, so I thought I'd just do a quick video on beta blockers, okay? Um, the first thing to say is that beta blockers are generally very safe drugs. Uh, there are certain people who just should not have beta blockers, and in particular if you have asthma, or if you're known to have an abnormally slow heartbeat, uh, then you should definitely avoid beta blockers. Um, if you have vascular disease, so you have critical uh, vascular disease, then that's also um, a relative contraindication. Um, I think it's always good, even after listening to this video, if you're contemplating beta blockers, to go and speak to your doctor and make sure that you do not have any underlying contraindications to beta blockers. Um, the second thing to say is that we do use them very often and they're probably the first agent I would reach for because of its safety profile. How do they work? Well, uh, there are lots of, of ways that the beta, uh, that beta blockers can be helpful in controlling palpitations. Firstly, um, they work by slowing the heart down and therefore they reduce the irritability of the heart. The second thing to say is that a lot of times when you have uh, palpitations, uh, they can be propagated by symptoms of anxiety or adrenaline rushes. And what beta blockers do is they oppose the effects of adrenaline. So um, they are sympatholytic. Uh, adrenaline is released by something called the sympathetic nervous system as a, as a response to flight or fright. And what beta blockers do is they oppose the effects of adrenaline. And therefore, um, if, the, if the heart becomes more irritable as a result of adrenaline, uh, then beta blockers will negate those effects. The third thing to say is that um, beta blockers are anti-inflammatory agents as well. And in my past videos, I've often commented on the fact that I think a lot of ectopics that we see these days are because of inflammation and um, <clears throat> beta blockers have a very um, uh, uh, good anti-inflammatory effect on the heart as well. So in general even a small dose of beta blocker can help with reducing uh, PVCs or PACs or ectopic beats. Um, what are the side effects of beta blockers? Well, the main side effect is that they slow you down. So they affect, they, they negate the effects of adrenaline. So a lot of people often say that, well, I just feel a bit slower and maybe I don't have as much energy as I used to. Um, and, um, and that's really the main side effect. Some people complain of things like, you know, cold hands and feet. Uh, in 
uh, slightly the older groups, sometimes you can get problems with erectile dysfunction. But it's important to know that most of these side effects are reversible in the sense that, firstly, they may not continue. Even if they occur in the first few days, they may just generally settle. And, even, and if they continue, then stopping the beta blocker will reverse the side effects. So there is no long-term side effect. So if you take a beta blocker for a week, it is unlikely that you'll be left with the side effect uh, three, four months down the line. They usually just get better as soon as you stop the beta blocker. Um, uh, so, so those are the main side effects of beta blockers. Uh, but on the whole, uh, they are generally safe agents and they do make a difference, even a small dose. And it's always good to go on a small dose first to firstly see if you can tolerate it, to minimize any possible side effects you can have, and then up titrate it depending on how it acts on the palpitations. Um, the other thing people say to me is, well, if I took the beta blocker, does that mean I have to be on it for life? And the answer is no. Um, I've used beta blockers very successfully um, in people with lots of palpitations, and I've actually been able to stop the beta blocker after a few weeks. And um, when I've done that, um, you know, the palpitations have gone away. And th the reason for that is that essentially, when people complain of a lot of ectopics, there is not one single thing that's causing them. It's a mixture of a variety of different things. So people can get the ectopics because they've eaten something, then they get very anxious and the anxiety causes adrenaline and cortisol levels to go up and that propagates the palpitations and causes more ectopics. And what beta blockers do is they, and so, so what happens is you get into this vicious cycle, you know, one thing propagating another and you get more ectopics, then you worry more, then your anxiety levels go up, your stress hormones go up, you get more ectopics and you keep going into this vicious cycle. And what beta blockers can do is they can sudden, they can put a halt on that cycle. They can break that cycle. So you take the beta blocker for, I don't know, um, three, four weeks. It breaks that cycle. The palpitations calm down. As the palpitations calm down, your anxiety levels calm down, your cortisol levels come down, and then the palpitations get less. And as that happens, after a few months, you you forget about the palpitations or they settle completely, you then come down on the beta blockers and eventually stop them. And in some people, the palpitations don't come back. In some people, they do. And it's not unreasonable to use the same kind of approach where you go on a beta blocker for um, a short period of time and see how you go. They're also very good because they have effects on the electrolytes, um, uh, electrolytes uh, of the body, and they can uh, help with magnesium and potassium hemogenesis. And so that's another reason why um, uh, they're worth trying if you are really struggling with your symptoms. Um, so I hope this has been useful. Um, if you have any questions, you can always um, get in touch with me. I have a website. Uh, and you can access me through there. I've got my secretary has a phone number. I have a Facebook page. Um, and I also have a Twitter handle now. So if you have any questions, don't hesitate to get in touch. I do try and answer my questions. Unfortunately, I just, I, I'm quite busy, so I struggle sometimes, but I will eventually get around to answering all your questions. So um, I wish you well. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to get in touch with me. Bye.